the red knot in Texas is a, uh, one of the big unknowns. There's a group of red knots that come through the coast of Texas and few winter here, but most of them are heading straight through to some unknown wintering area. So the goal of our work is to try to figure out how many there are and where they're wintering and then uh, ultimately where they're breeding. I mean, we know it's in the Arctic, but where in the Arctic, we don't know. We start uh, with a judgment of uh, what, what the behavior of the birds, uh, what the behavior of the birds can tell us. And then we uh, lay out the net, uh, to try to set it so that the outer edge, the catch area, which is about eight meters wide, uh, gets right to the, covers the spot where we think the birds are going to be. And then uh, we set two cannons with uh, big projectiles and that we have to angle uh, like the cannon so that uh, it really depends on the wind and the elevation. So, you know, the wind today was coming right off the sea and that if, uh, if we don't correct for that, then the wind will just pick up the net and blow it like a umbrella or something. So uh, lower the cannons a bit so the net's sort of firing right at the wind and then the wind lifts it up enough so it doesn't actually hit the birds. Then we get all that set up, then uh, run the wire that powers the cannons. And then uh, finally put a, a line called a jiggler right out in front of the net, about two feet out from the net so that if the birds get too close to the net and, and so therefore are in danger because the net will you know, come off like this and hit them. First job that we have is to make sure the birds are safe. We need to calm them down so we uh, quickly cover them with uh, dark material. So then we get the birds out of the net into the uh, keeping cage and then cover the keeping cage so that there, it's also dark and then the birds calm down. Uh, then we start our work which is first putting a metal band on and then a, the flag that gives a unique ID to the bird so that you can see that ID with a spotting scope and then we don't have to recapture it again to know where it is. And then I uh, went to Dave and he was measuring the bill size and the head bill and then the wing and that helps us relate uh, the size of the body to the weight. And then David also waited, and then it went on to uh, Scott and John, and we had different people doing it, Ron, and they were taking a uh, one wing covert out, and that feathers used to uh, determine the isotope signature of uh, that reflects the place where that feather was uh, was grown, which is usually the wintering area. So we're trying to develop a isotope profile for every wintering area so then when we catch birds in the stopovers while they're migrating then we can take that feather and know where it was wintering. And then finally it came to uh, Winnie and I and we were putting on the geolocators. Uh, the more we know about knots the more it tells us about all the other shorebirds and so uh, I think we can do a not only a good job for red knots, but we can do a good job for all other Arctic nesting shorebirds. The crew today was uh, experienced enough in their own work, as well as helping us last time, that that, uh, that all went really smoothly. Like all the birds left in good condition. And, and uh, so that's ultimately, that's the, the mark of success because, you know, we can always do the work, but if the birds come out at the end and they're you know, limping or can't fly well or they look weak or something like that, then you know that uh, there was a problem. We didn't have any injuries. Uh, we didn't have any mortalities. Uh, so, you know, it couldn't hope for anything better than what happened today.